The Pareto Principle states that to achieve 80% of the results, it takes 20% of the effort. So today, I'm going to teach you 80% of video editing in Premiere Pro in just 15 minutes. Now keep in mind, this 20% of the effort is only going to get you 80% of the way there with video editing, but you're still going to need a lot of practice to become a pro video editor. This training is really to make learning video editing if you're brand new as easy to understand as possible by distilling it down to its simplest form. So simple in fact, a 10 year old could grasp it. These fundamentals will give you the proper foundations as a video editor to start building upon so you can level up so much faster than jumping all over the place. Even if you are familiar with editing, I would still recommend watching this because even just one tip could save you hours off your workflow moving forward. We're gonna create a commercial from the ground up and I'll walk you through the entire process. This commercial is actually a boot commercial that I directed, edited, and even modeled for. Crazy, right? So let's throw on the timer on the clock and get started. Now, these steps for video editing will work on any editing software you use, so if you're using something different, simply follow the same workflow. So when you launch Premiere Pro, you will first need to create a new project. I've already made one here, so I'll close out, but just rename it, select your location, and hit OK. Then, what we're going to do is create bins to organize your project files and media. Right click on the project space on the left side and create a new bin. You can also create new items on the bottom corner of the project tab here. I'm going to create bins for my footage, audio, and sequences. The sequence is going to be your main editing space where you can assemble and edit your video and audio. Each sequence can then be edited and exported as its own production. Sequences can also be used to organize footage. I'm going to make a sequence for sifting through my footage and a sequence for my main video. You can create a new sequence by going to the project panel, hitting the new item icon, and clicking sequence. For these sequences, the sequence preset you can use doesn't really matter. I want them to be 1080p, so under RE and 1080p, you can select the first preset here, which will give you a 1080p and 24 frames per second timeline. That brings us to step number two for video editing called sifting. Here you're going to import your footage and drag everything into the timeline to the sifting sequence to sort through. There's many ways to sift through footage, but personally I find it easiest to drop everything into the timeline and go through it that way. The main thing I'm looking for during this process are short sections that would be clips I think would be usable for the final video. I'll look for things such as if the shot is well exposed, if the movement is smooth and does it look professional. If you've done a good job with the pre-production, then this part should go smoothly. In my case, I planned out every single shot that I wanted before the shoot and had a good idea of what I wanted the end video to look like. Because of that, I'm able to easily and quickly sift through the footage here and pick out the shots I need. So I'm just going to make cuts of the shots I like and bring them onto the second layer like so. That way I can organize the best shots afterwards. So I'll fast forward through this process and I'll come back when I'm done. So after I've grabbed the clips I want onto the second layer, I'm going to highlight them all and right click unlink. This is just going to separate the video with the audio since in my case I won't be using my in-camera audio. From here I'm going to drag all these clips onto my main video sequence. Then a trick you can do to organize the clips quickly is to go to sequence up on the top here and hit close gap. Now we have all the best clips together and from here I can drag them all over to the right side and slowly build a video as I drag the clips I want first to the leftmost side. Now, before we dive into the fun stuff, we're going to want to find a song that fits the theme of the video. I highly recommend you use music subscription services so that you can legally publish your videos without copyright. Some good sites to use are Musicbed, Epidemic Sound, Artlist, and Soundstripe. I actually found a cool song from Soundstripe which we'll use for this commercial. Since the song is much longer than the actual video itself, we can cut down the song to taste. I like to make sure that when I cut through the song that it still plays smoothly. You never want to cut up a high intensity part of the song and have it abruptly play into a low intensity portion of the song. A cool trick to smooth up these cuts is to right click in between the cut, just like so, and hit apply default transitions. This will apply a crossfade that helps seamlessly connect the two cuts. Now we're onto the most creative part of the editing process and that is to build your story. I want to stress again that this step is so much easier if you've done a good job in the pre-production process. 
If possible, you should be storyboarding or creating shot lists for all of your shoots because all that planning will carry over to the actual production process and into the post-production process as well. Again, since I've done a lot of planning prior to the shoot, I was able to direct the shots I wanted, especially since in this video I was also the talent. I had to have a clear picture of how I wanted the end product to look like. This planning also carries over into the editing process because now I already know creatively how I want my video to look like. When you're coming up with your creative process, here are some tips to keep in mind. One, make sure you're telling some sort of story. In this boot commercial, I wanted to show off the boots being used as the subject walks throughout the city. Therefore, I made sure that a lot of my shots were dynamic, showing the boots in action, and showing details when possible. Two, make sure your shots flow and use establishing shots. If my subject is walking from an alleyway into the city, I want to have establishing shots of the city to show that, oh, the subject is about to appear in a new environment. This allows the story to flow better than if there are too many back-to-back -back shots of the subject in completely different environments each time. And third, quality over quantity. A common beginner mistake I see is trying to make a video longer than it needs to be by reusing movements, scenes, or actions that have already been used. Some beginners will also expand clips, for example turning a really good 1 second clip into an average 2 or 3 second clip. It's better to make a 2 minute video with the very best of the best shots as opposed to making a 5 minute video with a mix of pretty good clips and mediocre clips. I'm going to fast forward through this process and I'll see you in the next step. So, now that we've laid out our story, feel free to delete all the extra footage you didn't end up using. The next step is the color correct and grade. To make things easier, I'm going to use an adjustment layer. That way, I only need to perform this step once and fine tune each individual clip as necessary. Go over to the create new item button on the project tab in the left side. Drag the adjustment layer onto the timeline. Now go over to Lumetri color and into the curve section. Since all these clips were shot in S-Log, we're going to need to color correct it to get the footage looking normal again. To do this, we'll need to bring back the contrast and saturation of the clip. First, we'll start by bringing back the contrast in the curve section. Create points for your highlights, shadows, and midtones, and bring up the highlights while bringing down the shadows in order to create an S-curve. You'll need to play around with this while looking at the Lumetri scopes on the left-hand side to ensure that you have the right amount of contrast. From here, we can add back some saturation as well in the basic correction tab. Now, I go more in depth on how to correct and grade footage in one of our previous videos, so go ahead and check that out if you're also looking to work with log footage. Next, I'm going to create another adjustment layer which we'll be using for a creative LUT for color grading. The previous step was used for color correction, which is where we made the clip look as natural as possible, just like we would see in the real world, and now we can stylize our look with a creative LUT. These LUTs can be found virtually anywhere online, and most likely your favorite YouTuber or filmmaker will have their own set of creative LUTs that you can either download or buy. This time, head on over to the creative tab, select your LUT of choice, and adjust the intensity as needed, and that's pretty much all there is to it. This is a quick and easy way to color correct and grade. So we've completed the bulk of our edit. The next few steps are what I would consider icing on the cake, but keep in mind that a lot of the times it's the smallest details that make the biggest difference. One way to improve the impact of your video is by using motion graphics and text animations. This is a perfect way to emphasize keywords and features of the product or service you're making the commercial for. We go a lot more in depth in our course 14 day filmmaker on how to create motion graphics, but today I'll make a few basic text animations that highlight the name and color of the boot. So first, I'm going to use the text tool. By default, this is the T keyboard shortcut. And over on the second clip, I'll write the name of the boots here. We're gonna write the Duke Chelsea boot. Feel free to fine tune and adjust the sizing in the essential graphics tab and just adjust the position however you like. On the next clip, we'll write the colorway of the boot. So here we'll write honey suede. Now, we're going to need to animate these texts in, so a quick way to do that in Premiere Pro is by using the transform effect. Over on the right hand side, under the effects tab, search for transform and drag that onto the text. Set a keyframe at the very first frame of the clip, then move five frames over by hitting shift plus the arrow key. In this case, I'm gonna use the right arrow key and set another keyframe. Go back to the first keyframe and under position, drag that X position out of the frame in the direction you want the text to pop in from. Make sure you set the shutter angle to 180 degrees to create a natural motion blur effect. 
We're gonna do the same thing for the next clip for our honey suede, but this time have the text swipe in from the right side. An easy way to do this is just by copying and pasting the effect before and adjusting the keyframe so that the first keyframe is out of the frame on the right side instead of the left side like it was before. And playing these back, you'll see the text swiping in from both sides. Now if you want to, you can layer on additional graphics using already created motion graphic templates to add another dimension to your video. These graphic templates can be found on many stock footage sites, and our favorite is Motion Array. This is a completely creative process, but the main idea is to find different ways to illustrate the context of your video in the most simplest and engaging way possible. Finally, one of my favorite parts of editing is sound design. Again, it's one of those little things that make the biggest differences. In this example, we won't need to do too much sound designing, but in a lot of cases, having different sound elements can drastically improve the quality of your video. I promise that even though you may not notice the power of sound design right off the bat, the extra elements will just create so much more depth and ideally create an immersive experience for the viewer. You want the viewer to feel almost like they're in the video, if that makes sense. All in all, the audio is half the viewer's experience and shouldn't be overlooked. Two of our favorite places to get sound effects are Epidemic Sound and Motion Array. You can literally find a sound effect for just about anything. In this case, I found an atmospheric sound effect of a city to help my viewers feel that they're in the city with the subject in the video. Play around the volume and gain of the effect so that it doesn't overpower the actual song, but at the same time, you want to make sure it's loud enough to have an impact. I'll typically make sure that the sound effect is anywhere from 6 to 20 decibels below my main soundtrack. A bonus tip to enhance your video even more is by using video overlays. These could be logos, light leaks, lens flares, snow, and fog effects, the list goes on. For this particular basic commercial, I wanted to use the company's logo to show in the beginning and end of the video. So what I did was I used an image of the logo to fade in where I needed it to. The very last step now is to review your video and export it. Make sure your cuts are clean, your colors and sound are good, and ask yourself, does my video tell a story? More often than not, there will be little things that you miss, so now is a good time to make sure your video is in good shape for delivery. Go to File, Export, and Export Media. I use the export presets on the right hand side for a quick and easy process. Now this will vary depending on what platform you want to post this on and what resolution you're shooting on. But for most scenarios, using the high quality 1080p HD preset will give you pretty good results. Select your file location and hit export. All you need to do now is wait. And that's it for creating this commercial. Although every single video you make will be a little bit different, the process and workflow should more or less be the same. As a recap, we went over one, importing and organizing your media, two, sifting your footage, three, finding a proper song, four, laying out the story, five, color correcting and grading, six, motion graphics, seven, sound design, eight, exporting. These are the eight primary steps I use every single time I edit commercial or ad. As you grow as a filmmaker or editor, you will eventually find your own process, which will most likely be some variation of this exact process that I've outlined in this video. Again, everything we've done will get you about 80% of the way there and will be enough to get you started making your own commercials, whether it's for yourself or your clients. The last 20% is going to take some more work and experience, but continue to practice, keep making videos, and you'll get there in no time. Everyone has a different journey, no matter what you're trying to learn, but the most important thing is that it has to start today. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, first of all, thank you. We appreciate each and every one of you. Second, editing is only one aspect of creating high quality content. You need to be able to master the fundamentals of shooting and scripting videos as well. With that being said, there's a lot of resources out there online to help you improve your skills. So much so that it can actually be pretty overwhelming, which is why we've condensed it all for you in our online film school 14 day filmmaker, where not only do we teach you everything you need to know about shooting high quality content, but we show you how to do it in only 14 days. You can go from knowing absolutely nothing about videography to making money shooting content for clients in half a month. So join over 20,000 plus students in the most affordable online film school today. We'll have a discount for you in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe, follow us on Instagram. I'll see you in the next one.